Jordan, it's almost like there's this like psychological barrier where individual Americans don't want to boast about the accomplishments, the successes, and the values of American ingenuity, American entrepreneurship, capitalism. Um, we're almost operating at a mass level now from a place of um, appeasement, from a place of um, almost embarrassment. And I'm curious if you agree with me, why, right? Like why, like why are, again, staying on this concept of uh, the age of, 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 you know, dumb, <laughs> which I'm just like throwing around with you right now. Like why, like why won't the Americans be proud of uh, individual freedom, individual liberty? Like why, why are we uh, timid with regards to boasting about these incredible values that are embedded in our constitution? Well, because our, our intellectuals have long abandoned the idea that economic and technological progress are virtues. Uh, you've got, you've got a, you, and they've abandoned the idea that you should be proud. I mean, that's true. I mean, in Christianity, being proud is a, is a vice and uh, the left considers individual pride a vice as Obama reminded us you didn't build that. It, you know, you didn't do it. It's community. It's whatever. Uh, you know, we live in a world where intellectuals teach us that everything is deterministic. So you can't take credit for anything. It's just your genes and your upbringing. And you're just a, you're just a cog in, mach in a machine. This is what Obama was, was projecting. But this has deep philosophical roots in, uh, uh, you know, in academia. Uh, the left is dominated by egalitarianism that says, well, basically the same and we should be treated not just treated by the law but we should all have the same outcome and that is an ideal a kind of an egalitarian ideal and indeed if you are successful you must have done it at somebody's expense you are therefore an oppressor and if you are poor or unsuccessful you must have been held back so therefore you are oppressed and our christian morality which still dominates everything that we do even if, even among atheists, the Christian morality that says that your meek shall inherit the earth, that we should sacrifice to the poor, that the poor are the standard of value, uh, you know, it, it basically reinforces this idea that the oppressed are the good, again, the, 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 the poor are the good, and the oppressors, the successful, are bad. And so you've got both on the right and on the left forces, intellectual forces, that manifest themselves in the culture in a variety of different ways, but intellectual, powerful forces saying, look, the real value in life is, is among the oppressed, and those who are the oppressors should be held back, should be restrained. And we see that in everything. You see, you know, that affects our economic policy. We hate successful businessmen. We hate successful businesses. So even uh, right now, you know, the FCC and in, in the government is going after all these successful, amazing companies. I mean, just some of the greatest companies in human history. And they want to break them up because they have monopolies. And uh, monopolies usually raise prices and you go, what price is Google raised, right? Where, where's Google hurting me exactly? Uh, but it doesn't matter. They're the evil. And, and by the way, again, this is bipartisan. So J.D. Vance, who is an up and coming superstar on the Republican side, is a huge fan of Lena Khan's who is uh, the current uh, chairman of the FCC, who is associated with the left. And the left and the right, again, are uniting uh, in their hatred of successful business and successful technological business. So intellectually, intellectually, uh, be because of a morality that says the meek are the virtuous, success is to, is to be viewed with suspicion and broken up politically. Uh, you know, altruism, that's the morality that says other people that's what you should care about morally. You should be willing to sacrifice yourself for other people. That is infecting our foreign policy. It's infecting the way we view successful companies. It's affecting the way we view success versus failure. It's affecting everything that uh, how, how we view uh, the world around us. And your terminology, it's altruism in a sense and unreason that are making us dumb. Those are the causes, the intellectual causes. It just, it just seems so irrational. Like you use this hundred year mark as a way to highlight. And if you think back over the past hundred years, I'm, I'm sure you would agree, like the most relevant, the most profound nations have been those that embraced, um, 
entrepreneurship and technology and growth. Yet now we're in this moment in time, as you noted, where, you know, almost free market capitalism is being shunned. In your opinion, like why does democracy need free market capitalism today more than maybe, you know, over the past two or three decades? Well, I mean, we've always needed capitalism and we've been again moving away from free market capitalism for a long, long time. I don't think we've ever had what I would consider perfect, perfect uh, free markets. I think we've always wanted to regulate them and control them. We've never trusted markets, uh, sadly, uh, tragically, really, uh, because I, I, I think that uh, I think that as a consequence, we're poorer. I think as a consequence, we're less free. But suddenly, sometime around the early part of the 20th century, probably around 1913, 14, with the administration of Woodrow Wilson, we started a slow turning away from everything has to do with free markets and capitalism. FDR moved us dramatically away from, uh, from free markets. Uh, and, and since then, we've kind of been drifting downwards. We've allowed certain industries in particular to stay free enough so that they continue to innovate and continue to move us forward. But even there, there's a limit to how much freedom we allow. And, and right now we're reaching a point where, okay, tech industry, we've allowed you enough freedom. You've grown. You, you're too big now. We don't like you. So we're going to start regulating you as well. And we're killing the golden goose. We're killing, you know, what actually sustains the U.S. economy and moves it forward, which is... Silicon Valley and its equivalents around the country. Uh, it is that spirit of entrepreneurship. It is that spirit of innovation. It's that spirit that says we can do anything and, and we're going to try and we're going to explore and we might fail, but who cares? We'll just try again later. Uh, that spirit is is slowly being squeezed by our regulators. That's, that spirit, by the way, was long ago killed in other industries. Uh, it, it somehow sustained itself in tech and now it's slowly being squeezed and they're trying to kill it in tech as well. And then what, right? And, and, and then, then it's a slow decline from there because, because there's nothing else, there's no other place where, where we still allow people to actually have uh, any semblance of freedom.